Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're having a great start to your day this Saturday down at Riverside Park. That will be the place for an incredible sports tournament. It is the 32nd annual Rock Hard Sevens Rugby Tournament. And joining us today to talk a little bit more about the event, we are now being joined by Kim Trujina. She is the president of the Grand Rapids Women's Club Rugby Team and also Mike Marshall, who is the president of the Grand Rapids Men's Club Rugby Team. How are you both doing today? Great, Phil, thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, Doing no, well, thank you. Yep. Now, very excited to have the chance to talk to you guys. Uh, first things first, though, before we get into the tournament, I would love to hear just a little bit more about the sport of rugby. Obviously, people are generally familiar with the sport itself, maybe haven't played it themselves or maybe haven't watched a game potentially, but it is a growing sport in popularity. Uh, I would love to hear just how you guys sort of got involved with your respective teams and really the sport of rugby in general. Mike, if you um, want to go okay. first. Sure, I'll go first. Okay, um, yeah. I played it a couple of years at, at Central Michigan University uh, several years ago <laughs> and uh, was watching a game eight years ago of the guys. And a couple of the guys said, hey, there's some girls that were uh, getting a group together. And I went to see if I could hang with them. And they had just gotten started. And I've been a part of this great sport ever since. And just still love it to this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got uh, my start was in high school at Catholic Central. I was a sophomore and came through with basically some upperclassmen said, you have to play rugby. And I said, <laughs> OK, so went out there and been doing it ever since. Mm -hmm. um, played for Grand Valley, um, played on and off for GR for a few years, uh, moved to Atlanta, kind of played for a couple clubs on there here and there. And then when I came back to Atlanta, back from Atlanta, um, hopped on again, and then I ended up taking over as president of the club back in 2018. Mm -hmm. Been with GR ever since. Right, absolutely. Also coached for a minute at Catholic as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, and I think the one thing that people who maybe aren't as invested in the sport, or maybe even the people that are invested in the sport know, is that it is a pretty grueling sport, rugby itself. And uh, is that just sort of part of the appeal for the both of you? Is that something that you kind of like about it? The fact that it's, you know, you're not really wearing a whole lot of protection and, you know, you're running around and really just exercising the whole time. Absolutely. For me, it's a great stress reliever. Um, you know, even just in practice, getting to tackle the pad, your teammates, um, and, and getting that exercise out, um, it, it's a great way. It is grueling. Um, there, are, there are obviously injuries because we are tackling each other, mm -hmm. um, but we teach people how to do it the correct way. Um, we play against other teams that are teaching the correct way, and so we, we really try to keep those injuries down to a minimal. Right. Yeah, uh, for me, when I got into it, um, I was always a bigger guy and kind of stuck on the line with football and always wanted to run with the ball. So mm -hmm. that was my thing, but was always a, a hefty kid. So getting rugby, it's like we want our big boys running with it. Um, what I love about the sport, especially when I was coaching and, te and teaching kids, especially young kids in high school, their first experience out there is uh, the best way I think to describe it when people compare it to like football with no pads. I, my response is, you know, rugby is a contact sport football is a collision sport you know in our sport there are rules regarding how you can hit and tackle you can't just randomly you know hit somebody for no reason you know you have to wrap so there's safety built in and i will tell you when you get out there and any parent who's sitting back saying hey there's no pads it's a little bit different when you're not playing when both sides aren't having pads mm -hmm. so you think twice but the physicality of it is awesome um the fact that you know we've got people of all races, sizes, playing at the same t same time is fantastic. Um, there are injuries, sure, just like any other sport, but they're not as many as you think. So, right, no, and that physicality is going to be on full display this Saturday for the tournament at Riverside Park. Mike, I would love to just hear a little bit more details about the tournament itself and sort of the format. I know that this is a sevens tournament, which is a little bit more fast paced than maybe a more traditional rugby tournament. Yeah, so seven, especially, I think I kind of call sevens a little bit of a gateway into uh, rugby itself in general. Sevens is a phenomenal version of the sport. Uh, so it's seven on seven, and you play the same size field as you would um, normal 15s rugby. Um, but seven on seven is what's in the Olympics today. 
um, <clears throat> and you're going to go seven on seven with seven minute halves. And for us, it's a tournament style. So we have about 30 teams that are going to be there with three different divisions. We have a women's division, a high school boys division, and a men's division. Um, all will be competing for um, to get their name on our elusive traveling or trophy that we have uh, there. But <clears throat> we'll have two fields at Riverside Park. Again, you're looking at quick games. It's a great spectator sport in the sense that you're going to watch a lot of rugby in a short amount of time. And it's all fast paced. It's constant excitement. Um, there's no downside. Uh, constantly guys seeing everybody running, um, tackling, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And there's a beer tent. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's always a plus. And Kim, you know, Mike had mentioned it that uh, on top, that there are three different sections for this tournament. There's two men's divisions and then also a women's division. You being a part of the uh, Grand Rapids women's club rugby team, uh, just talk to about the importance of having the women representation in a big tournament like this and really growing the sport for women to, you know, find a new interest in the sport, really. Yeah, um, it. I love how we work together with a guys um, group. They brought us in. They helped us out when we were getting started eight years ago. Um, and I think ever since then, we've been a part of this tournament um, in varying degrees. Um, this sport I love because we need all body types. And so there's there's no body shaming at all. We we need tall people, we need fast people, we need we need every single body type. And I think um, that's what you're gonna see on display this weekend um, in, in all the divisions, but especially the women's is that we need all body types and we love to teach people. I, I am a teacher and so I love teaching people how to tackle and how to play this fantastic sport that we have. Mm, absolutely. And of course, this is the 32nd annual tournament uh, that will be at Riverside Park this Saturday. I'd love to hear from both of you. You know, you obviously have a lot of hopes that this tournament goes well and people find a passion for the sport, obviously. Uh, but what would you consider a success, really, uh, in the grand scheme of things for Saturday? Uh, I'll limit on that one. For me, it's if we can gain new people that love the sport, that's what I'm going to determine as a success. Uh, we'll always have teams coming out. There's, we'll have teams there every year when we run it. Um, but if we can have more people, whether a fan, um, you know, just adding more fans, seeing someone get introduced to it for the first time, that to me is a success. Sharing our sport with the community and promoting it throughout Grand Rapids um, is huge for us because we think it's I mean, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't love it. So um, that to me would be a huge success. I mean, every year we get a couple people come out saying, hey, I saw you guys, I was at this tournament. Can I join? Of course, everyone and every, everyone's welcome. I totally agree with Mike. I, I think, you know, if we can get a couple more fans out there, a couple more players on all the sides, um, you know, we even need refs. If you're like, man, I don't know that I want to take that collision anymore, <laughs> but I'd love to learn the sport and ref. That That's another way for people to get involved. But we, we can always have someone helping out with the team, even if they don't want to play and they just want to be a part of this. Um, that's a success. I mean, we also want to win. I'm not going to lie. We, we <laughs> want to win the women's division too. So, yeah, No, no, absolutely. You're, you're, you're going to want to uh have as much success as possible, obviously. But I think, yeah. you know, building up that fan base is going to be huge. And, of course, people can uh, come on out to Riverside Park and watch the tournament in its entirety. It starts at 9 a.m. this Saturday. And the best part is the event is completely free to attend. And if you would like to know a little bit more about the tournament, you can find everything you need to know right now over on our website, woodtv.com. Mike and Kim, thank you so much for stopping by the live desk today. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks thank so you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And I want to thank everybody else for tuning into this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.